Okay, okay, I know the title of this video is very inflammatory, but let me explain myself. Freedom Planet 2 is an amazing 2D platformer made by Galaxy Trail. It somehow manages to iterate perfectly on the old retro style platformers of yesterday, while also adding its own masterful take on the genre. It has basically been in development for almost 8 years now since the release of the first game in 2014, and as such, the game is seriously polished to a T, and almost every aspect of the game is satisfying and fun to engage with. Because of this, I will break down the game into 3 distinct categories that summarize its entirety. The main gameplay, the music, and the overall plot of the entire game. Please note that there will be spoilers, and without further ado, let's get into it. When talking about anything involving Freedom Planet 2, it is almost impossible to bring up anything besides the amazing level design and level aesthetics. Each and every level in this game feels like its own distinct location that's been lived in and that has been formed into its own subset of mechanics and atmosphere. By the nature of this game's genre and story, each level in the game feels distinct, almost as if they each have their own personality to them. But that in and of itself isn't unique to this game's genre. The thing that sets Freedom Planet 2 apart from most other 3D platformers is the way it weaves in its narrative and style into each of these levels and gives it life and more depth. What I mean by this is that every level in the game tells a story, literally and figuratively. Let me just give you a little example from one of my favorite stages in the game, Ancestral Forge. You start off the level on the seaside coast at sunset when you're randomly attacked by this whale monster. The ensuing fight causes you to sink in the sand into the sea basin where you're more focused on platforming and puzzles rather than speed. As you travel through this underground cavern, you get messages and signs of old civilizations and ancient technologies prop up everywhere as you go through your journey. The thing that is remarkable about this stage in particular is that the player will go through it and travel through all of the vicarious puzzles and atmosphere, not thinking much about it, but what you go through in Ancestral Forge is something that you'll never go through in the entire game. Every single aspect of that level was custom made to build on that atmosphere, and once you get out of the basin back to the sunset seashore, you will never play a level like it ever in the game. Now, I could have just cherry picked Ancestral Forge as the expertise of this game, but you will find this common principle all throughout the level design of Freedom Planet 2. Levels such as Zulong Jungle, Nalal Lake, and Globe Opera, just to name a few. And while these are some of the later levels, you can find hints and gestures at this type of level design in the early levels of the game as well. Because of this extremely revolutionary level design principle, I feel like in my opinion, Freedom Planet 2 has the most varied and distinct levels out of any 2D platformer to date. Even in the best retro platformers the industry has to offer, most of them struggle to achieve such varied gameplay from such a consistently styled genre. But Freedom Planet 2 manages to effortlessly maintain this game design motif all the way through the entire game. It is that type of consistency in the gameplay that makes Freedom Planet 2 stand out from so many other platformers of its kind. But when talking about the amazing design and atmosphere of every level in Freedom Planet 2, it is almost impossible to not mention the masterful OST that brings it all together. Now for close viewers of this channel, you all know that I am a huge fan of retro style music. Specifically, highly stylized and atmospheric level music that matches the tone of the stage. So let me tell you, when I say Freedom Planet 2's OST is better than Sonic Mania and Sparky Electric Jester, you have to know that means a lot. Every track in the game flourishes the player with a high sense of jubilee and fast-paced octane. It is just insane how every level theme somehow perfectly matches the atmosphere of the level itself and seamlessly manages to make the player match the tempo of the level. And even the tracks outside of the main gameplay manage to fill me, the player, with huge swaths of emotion due to the huge range in tonality and resonance that each song has in the game. It is saying something when Freedom Planet 2 has over 90 tracks of music and almost all of them are recognizable. Some of my favorites in the game have to be Carol's theme, Phoenix Highway, and Zoutland, just to name a few. I highly recommend people go listen to the soundtrack outside of the game, as I assure you, the quality of it will impress you, not only in its range, but also in its atmosphere. Now onto the final aspect of Freedom Planet 2 that makes it such a great retro platformer, the story. Now before I dive into that, I just want to mention that I wasn't a huge fan of the first Freedom Planet game, 
and one of the reasons for that was its story. I wasn't a huge fan of the Saturday morning cartoon aesthetic they are going with for the narrative. It felt really cheesy to me, and though the end of the game picks up the pace a little bit, the overall product is lacking in many departments. With all that being said, Freedom Planet 2 has none of the problems I associate with the first game in terms of story department. It's way more serious, emotional, and let's just say competently written. Now, I'm not saying it's Shakespeare or anything, but it definitely isn't a bad story. Now, I can't really talk about the story until I mention the multiple playable characters in the game, which I have neglected to up until this point. In Freedom Planet 2, you can play as Lilac, Carol, Nira, and Mila as the four main protagonists. Each of them have their own varied style of gameplay that somehow add even more depth to the already uniquely crafted and amazingly designed levels. Now, as of making this video, I have only played through Lilac's campaign in the story since it's a pretty long game, all things considered. It took me quite a considerable amount of time to finish it all. That being said, I can say that Lilac's story, the one I did play, is way more engaging this time around. It starts off with this mysterious figure called Murga emerging from the bottom of the sea and foreshadowing her eventual presence in the narrative. We then cut to Carol and Lilac in a quite updated Dragon Valley, just like the original game. Only this time around, they're dealing with new robotic forces that are wreaking havoc near their home. The robots eventually destroy their home, and they're forced to move in with Mila until the repairs can be finished. This is the main inciting incident that kicks off the story to Freedom Planet 2. After this point, you will travel through the land to many of the same locations that you saw in Freedom Planet 1. And while they are the same places fundamentally, they are heavily upgraded in style, aesthetics, and presentation. One massive thing that I want to mention here is that every major location in the game, Shang Tu, Shui Gong, Shang Mu, and a bunch of other places, have their own open level sort of thing where you can travel and talk to NPCs. These open areas are quite appealing in my opinion and add a lot of character and personality to the game's story. You will find a lot of distinct characters in design and personality just like the rest of this game and their dialogue is quite charming to say the least. These areas act as sort of cool down camp that you can hang out in between levels for to catch your breath and prepare for the next one. I highly recommend you take your time as you travel in between them look out for the scenery and the dialogue between characters. And man, the characters this time around in Freedom Planet 2 absolutely stand out with their own unique flair and personalities. They sell the story and narrative of this game perfectly with their amazing voice acting and beautifully done sprite work and animations. A standout in particular for me was Mayor Zhao. Even though I liked him in the first game, the way his character shines through in Freedom Planet 2 is just simply entertaining to engage with. I found myself genuinely laughing at some of the dialogue that he espoused in the game. Battle stations? This is Mayor Zhao's luxurious sky palace! Not Mayor Zhao's dreadnought marauder! What happened to all the cannons? Where else was I going to put the hot springs? Just... My beautiful sky palace! My ship! My ship! Simply a treat of character. And he is far from the only character that can elicit this type of emotions from the player. People who pay close attention to the story will notice other characters like Captain Kala, Kurizan, and Murga, just to name a few. Even my least favorite characters in the game, A and Nira, still managed to get some genuine emotion out of me as I went through the narrative of the game. I'm not going to summarize everything here because I want you all to experience it for yourself. But with all that being said, it's time to get into the finale of Freedom Planet 2. Now, sadly, this is where some of my criticisms actually have to come through on the game. I don't particularly like the direction that the ending had in the game. Throughout the entire narrative of the story, they were building up to a massive, well, tragedy that happened between the main character Lilac and the leader of Shang 2. This organic conflict was the main motivating factor to the primary villain of the game, Murga. And while throughout the entire narrative of the game, she's a pretty engaging villain, it is towards the end when they turn her into just another generic tyrant like Brevon. I was actually really excited to see how the ending of the story would change the characters, but in the end, you just stop her like usual and save the day. Pretty disappointing, especially considering how Freedom Planet 2 seemed like it was trying to go for something much more darker. But after it's all said and done, the story was still a joy for me to get through, and I highly recommend the game to anybody who enjoys fast-paced platformers with engaging and atmospheric music, and a competently written narrative that is really engaging. With that all being said, I hope you enjoyed this review of Freedom Planet 2, and buy the game yourself. 
it is definitely well worth it. I'll see you next time and hope to see you becoming the Battle Spear Champion. Yeah.